all people, and this also includes all beings whatsoever, but we're talking mainly, of course, about human beings. All people are manifestations, disguises of the total reality behind this cosmos. And that if that is so, there are not any mistakes in the world. When you look at patterns on the foam of the breaking waves on the seashore, and you look at the outlines of mountains, the grain in wood, and the markings on marble, you notice that it never makes an aesthetic mistake. Never. Also, when you study plants, and you go into their relationships with each other and with insects, the fact that the so-called diseases of plants are the full life of some other kind of organism, having a ball. And you see this complexly interrelated world and you realize that it all hangs together. That everything outside the human world is a system of balances where you couldn't have really any form of life without the others going on too. There have to be friends and there have to be enemies. Because if there aren't enemies, the friends get too prosperous. And they kill themselves by their excess of exuberance. So they are constantly being pruned by various kinds of enemy species. And what is, when you got down there and you suppose you identified yourself with a certain plant, you would thoroughly object to, uh, if you were a lettuce, to the snails eating you up. And also a person who gets identified with lettuces, you see, say somebody who grows lettuces for his living, gets mad at the snails. But actually, lettuces need snails. Because there would be too many lettuces if there weren't snails and those lettuces would choke each other. Now, of course, a human being comes in and starts organizing the lettuces, you see, so that the seeds don't propagate in the usual way because he puts them out in rows. And that's a different kind of a scene. And so he objects to the snails. But that's because he's looking at the problem of lettuces from a partisan point of view. And it's quite right that he should do so. What he may not see, uh, because he's taken the side of lettuces against snails, he fails to see that conflict at one level is health at another. Just as conflict going on between microorganisms in your bloodstream is absolutely essential to the health of your organism as a whole. But you don't, you're not aware of that conflict going on because conscious attention doesn't need to, ordinarily to focus upon it. And so you don't get involved and you're not anxious about what party is winning and what party is losing. They're keeping up a kind of balance. Now then, to take this a step further, we are all amazingly involved in the process of being human and playing our game and taking our side. And therefore our victories and defeats, our sicknesses and our healths, are things we get mighty partisan about. And therefore we cannot see that human behavior is just like everything else. It never makes a mistake.
Only, it's never making a mistake must include the feeling that mistakes can be made. See, that's where uh, this point of view would differ somewhat from the point of view of a Christian scientist who uh, strives manfully, in a way, to assert that evil is purely illusory, but doesn't quite grasp the point that the illusion of there being something evil is important and good too. We're not trying to get rid of it, you see, because if you get rid of it, uh, you, you would have problems. It's, it's uh, I could say, for example, that a character, a historical character like Hitler, uh, is someone about whom it is very natural for most of us to feel angry. And that's perfectly right that we feel angry, although he is a, as much a natural phenomenon as an earthquake. So, what we have then is a system of a sort of hierarchy of levels and at the point where you are involved you can't stand aside from yourself and look at it objectively in the same way as you look at the patterns of foam on the seashore or as the life of the fishes in the tide pools but to be liberated is to be able to see human life in the same way as you see all other life. And to do that, you have to be able to live, as it were, on two levels. The level of involvement and the level of detachment. And therefore, cultivating the level of detachment is something that is done through the mysterious human property of self-consciousness to be able to know that you know, to feel that you feel. And by possessing that faculty, which is uh, self-consciousness, is being able to reflect upon one's own life, we are able to become, uh, as it were, to go to a, a level at which our own life is seen in its total context in the universe. That is to say, to realize that yourself is not your ego, which is the standpoint at which you are involved in your game and taking sides, but yourself is the eternal immeasurable reality that is what there is. <laughs>